Dear Epsilon user, welcome to the Epsilon Professional video tutorial series. In this episode, I want to show you how you can create your own components in Epsilon via the macro feature. Via this feature, you are able to create a macro object which you can use like a usual component and which can be as complex as you need. As an example, I want to create a macro to be used as a very simple CO2 capture component. First, we insert a new macro object by selecting insert and then macro object or by clicking on the insert macro button on the toolbar. If you open the properties window, you're able to make the same general adjustments as with all other components. I change the name and the description into CO2 capture. And I also changed the orientation. I want the component upright due to it looks more like a reactor. Now you need to open the inner macro view to set the in and outputs, specification values and may do some programming if needed. You can open the inner macro view by double clicking on the macro with the middle mouse button or by clicking right on it and then select open macro object. A new window opens which displays the inner macro view and includes your macro interface. It is easy to switch between the outer view and the inner view by selecting the respective tab. Well, let's start to develop the model. Select the inner macro view and open the interface block. You're also able to change the orientation of the interface as you like. Well, now determine the needed connections. For that, select the tab Ports and click on the table in the column Number. A new port is created and this port should be the flue gas inlet, so we choose flue gas stream as type. Because it should be an input, we select into macro as direction of flow. In the column description, you can write your description which will be visible in the properties of this port. Altogether, we need four ports. Besides the flue gas inlet, we need a flue gas outlet. A CO2 outlet. And we also want a port for the power demand. After you've created the needed ports, you can set the port positions in the Port Position tab. For that, select User Defined in the Positioning drop-down menu and position the ports as you like. The positions are displayed on the window on the right side. If you now switch to your outer macro window, you see all your defined ports. The CO2 outlet and the power inlet are mirrored. I simply mirror the macro object to get to our desired view. Now we switch back to the inner macro view and if you move the cursor, over the flue gas outlet, which is connection point 2, you see that it was named by us as flue gas outlet, but the description shows inlet. And that is due to the point of view from which we look at this port. So every port can be seen as a corridor through which we can cross the system boundary between the inner and outer macro view. So let's assume we go through the flue gas inlet into the macro. If we then switch the point of view to the inner view, the same port is an outlet because someone coming through the port would get out of the outer view. Well, after you've defined your ports, you can start to model your process in the inner macro view window. To separate the CO2 from the flue gas, we use a selective splitter, which is component 52. Select it and place it on your workspace. And just design your process in the inner view like you do as always in Epsilon. Connect the flue gas inlet, which is port 1, to the selective splitter. And in the splitter, the CO2 will be separated from the flue gas 
So connect the separated stream to the CO2 outlet, which is port 3. And finally, connect the flue gas stream to the flue gas outlet of the macro object on port 2. So the flue gas which flows into the macro is connected to the splitter, where the CO2 will be separated from the flue gas. You now see that a macro contains a process model that will be displayed as a component within and outlets by the outer macro window. Now you also have to model the dependency of the power demand. It is related to the CO2 outlet. So to model this, select a value transmitter, which is component 36. And then connect it to the electric line and to the CO2 outlet. Then you need to adjust the value transmitter. The type of input is mass flow and our type of output is power. And we assume that as a reference at a mass flow of 5 kilograms per second, the process needs 1500 kilojoules per kilogram of energy. Now you've finished the design of the model in the inner view. And you can use the macro if you set the JCO2 value directly in the selective splitter. To do so, open the properties menu of the splitter and set the CO2 separation rate to your desired value. I do set it to 80 percentages and then close the window via the OK button. After that, you can close the inner view window. Now you can use the macro object like a usual component. Drag the lines of the macro ports a bit and add some value crosses. Now place component 33 on the flue gas inlet to define the inlet parameters. Open the properties window to adjust it. And I do assume a mass flow of 200 kilograms per second, and let's say its temperature is 165 degrees Celsius, and the pressure is 1.2 bar. Now run a simulation. And as you can see, the macro works. To depict the CO2 separation of our component more clearly, I do assume an inlet stream of pure CO2 now. Open the properties menu of the value input and adjust the material fractions. I also adjust the mass flow and I do assume a CO2 stream of 10 kilograms per second. After that, run the simulation again. And you now see that 80 percentages of the CO2 is separated from the flue gas in our macro component. You also can look up the computed power demand of the component. But to be able to adjust all relevant parameters of your macro object in its properties menu, you need to define specification values in the inner view. And this will be the topic of the next episode. So let's sum up what we've learned. We know how we are able to insert a new macro object to our workspace. I also showed you how to open the inner view of the macro and how ports are created and how they are displayed as in and outlets in the inner and outer view of the macro object. And you also learned how macro objects in Epsilon Professional are structured. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. And if you have any questions about Epsilon Professional, please do not hesitate to contact us via email at info at epsilon.com.